Oh, while I am escaping with E.T. G'day and welcome to the show. Well, this week, we're up at Southwest Rocks and look at these two beautiful Mulloway. A great night session, but we've got loads of action. Check it out. We start out wide in the ocean. Oh, look at him go. Where the mahi-mahi oh, or dolphin that's... fish are putting on an energetic and colourful show. Back in shore, we bait up with worms and strike it rich with a wealth of fighting whiting. All right, the size of that one. I go crabbing from a kayak and Paul Brahini serves the sandies up as fiery Singapore chilli crab. But nothing beats the nighttime yep. excitement of a double dewy really catch. Clean skin. If there's one thing better than an early morning drive on the country roads of northern New South Wales, it's doing the drive in my brawny new BT50 Mazda with my Quintrex 610 Trident in tow. And heading for the ocean on the Maclay River, I hand control over to my local fishing friend Tony Didio. Well, we've just come through the Southwest Rocks Bar. All the sets are moving through, and it's very dangerous. We've all got our life jackets on, and that's step number one. But then you've got to be able to come through the bar without that problem of turning side on and getting flipped over. Today, we're heading out offshore. Southwest Rocks, famed for its black marlin, and that's what we're targeting today. But some days, even the best laid plans don't work even with the best equipment on your side. So we decide to aim our Shimano tackle at a more reliable target. Using Tony's local knowledge on top of our combined fishing hunting experience, we're soon gathering in bait fish in the size and quantity we'll need to work a surefire fishing strike zone. Southwest Rocks is really close to the continental shelf but also the current is roaring out here. It's got to be doing over four knots, maybe even five knots. It's crazy. And our target is the mahi-mahi or dolphin fish. Come on. You want a fish? Yeah, dolphin fish. He's under the boy. Oh, yes, keep him coming. Well done. Good stuff. You got him. Oh, he's nice too. Yeah, he's Beautiful really colours. Good. Yeah, light, light up well, aren't they? Yeah, they're great. Really blue fins. Yeah, awesome. All right, now that is a colourful fish. Pop is they go crazy in the boat. They get tied up. First fish, as soon as we pass the buoy, boom, straight on. That would be 100 year old, that fish. They Man, tend to only la last a few years and they grow to even a maximum size, like, you know, we're talking big fish. Big fish. 30 plus kilo fish. I hope we get back and see if we can get one of them. And this fishing is no passing fad. And the fish aggregating device is put out here for a number of different things, for some fishery science research, but also for recreational fishers to be able to come out and fish these because a lot of the bait fish hang there. And then obviously the big predators from mahi-mahi right through to tuna and of course marlin all hang around this area. So it's, oh, there we go, I'm hooked up. Just trolling, we're just trolling very slowly. I think we're onto a dolphin fish, which are an amazing fish, beautiful looking fish. You can see his colours just bright aqua blue. Oh, that's a good fish too. He's a nice fish, yeah. He's a real nice fish. Oh, look at him go. We've got to go. Look at that. He is off. A little Yamakatsu hook in there. The funny thing about dolphin fish is that there's a male with a harem of females. So one big, massive male with a big lumpy head. Oh. And up to 40 females hang with her. And what happens, if the male actually gets captured or killed, one of these big females turns into a male. Just an incredible thing. We've got to get up that way, big fella. We're, we're running out of line. Okay. And we're on a light uh, anarchy rod, one of the Shimano rods. Beautiful setup. And I've got a big twin power, 14,000 reels. So uh, you can catch just about anything with this baby. And it's a really good combination. Uh, 
they are such a powerful fish. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He's a nice fish. Yeah, he's a good fish. Very nice fish. Come on, back this way. I'm not sure how he's going to do it to try and get it over his tail. Yeah, you might have to grab his tail, mate. Yeah. And then just stick it over. Just... Look at that gamakatsu hanging in there. There's bogus in his gob. I'm just taking the gamakatsu off. Okay. okay. One, two, three. Oh, <laughs> slimy. That's, that's beautiful. <laughs> Woohoo! Ha <laughs> ha! Now that's a dolphin fish. Beautiful, big fins up the top. These were aqua blue at one stage. Look, oh, it's got the green on. Gorgeous fish. That is an impressive fish. I love them. We'll let this big gun go. And I reckon it's ready to go. Look at the colours on it. All right. Slipped him off. He's on his own men's. Oh, down he goes. Wow, that water's so blue. And away he goes. Wow, that was fantastic fun. Now for a fishing segment without a rod and reel. Well, I've got a different Hobie segment for you today. We're going crabbing. And uh, I love my blue swimmer crabs over summer. Right at the moment, you can put out four of these witches hats. And uh, if you're really lucky, can have a bit of a reward in a beautiful feed of blue swimmer crabs. All right, let me take you through what you have to do. First of all, the witch's hats. So these are the floats you use. So all you gotta do is tie your main rope onto the ball and they provide a hole straight down the middle, nice and simple. Pull it through and just tie a nice easy knot. And it gives you plenty of room to put your details on there. Make sure that you write your full last name, put your initial in front, give your postcode, your date of birth. Once you've done this, just tie the rope to the top of your witch's hat. You're gonna use all sorts of baits. Here's a nice big fresh mullet. Hook it onto your middle rung of your net. A nice easy way to get the bait off at the end of the day in business. One of the lines can go down into four meters of water. Can go beyond that, but we've tied her up there. And then the other ones are going in a little bit shallower. There's a lot of weed out here and in about three metres of water, it's a perfect spot for these beautiful blue swimmers to be hiding. Well, this is the fun time when you actually get the chance to uh, check out the pots and see if anything's crawled on in and got tangled up in the mesh. And obviously they've got to be the right legal size. I think it's six and a half across the carapace. Just got to check the regulations because different systems allow you to put the pots out and others don't. Oh. oh yeah, oh a bit of a mess, because there's a big one in there. Alright, look at the size of that one. And another smaller one, a female. I'm going to go into shore now and I'll just untangle these ones and give you a better look at these beautiful blue swimmer crabs. Right, you've got to be careful because they're very quick with their nippers as well. Now this crab here is a female. They've got this very wide section of their body here. And on the males, it's very narrow. So you'll see the difference. We've got a big male in one of the other nets. All right, there we have a female blue swimmer or sand crab. Just make sure you check your rules and regulations because each state is different. In some states, uh, you're not allowed to take the females. Here in New South Wales, you can take both the male and the female. All right, definitely a good six centimetres across. We might put her in the bucket. Let's go for the big guy. But definitely do not want, <laughs> I don't want to get my hands close to those nippers. Goes out crabbing, wants to catch a huge big one. Even more impressive when they go into the bucket. All right. Oh, he's so big he can hardly fit that one. <laughs> I 
Sustainability of the foods we eat is a hot topic these days, and one place you'll often see a sustainable food chain in action is in the hustle and bustle of your local fish market. Now I'm here with Chef Paul Breheny, and today's FRDC featured species is the blue swimmer crab. Now Paul, it's always great fun catching blue swimmer crabs. They're such good eating. How do you like to cook them? Well, today, Andrew, I'm gonna show you viewers my version of the chili Singapore crab. All right, well while you're cooking the crab, let's find out more about this tasty crustacean. The blue swimmer crab, sometimes referred to as the sand crab, is caught commercially in various places in Western Australia, South Australia, and along most of the East Coast. Now we wanna get a nice color on these shallots. The national stock structure is complex with blue swimmer crab catches reported by no fewer than 23 management units across the four states. And there's good reason for such detailed management. Now I'm gonna add some chili. While stocks are classified as sustainable or undefined over most management units, the species is considered environmentally limited in WA's Cockburn Sound and Shark Bay fisheries. A couple of good spoonfuls of garlic and is considered transitional recovering in South Australia's important Gulf of St Vincent fishery. So obviously I've cleaned the crab earlier on. But numbers are growing again in these regions thanks to careful management and control, sometimes extending to temporary closure of catching. Today, South Australia is the leading blue swimmer producer. Then what we've got to do is just keep stirring some tomato ketchup. Chili sauce in there as well. So you just keep giving it a little stir. Okay, the crab's looking fantastic now. It's ready to come out. Now to finish the sauce, what we do is take a little bit of our chicken stock. I'm gonna mix it with some corn flour, a handful of shallots. So now it's time to plate our crab. Just a ladle of our sauce all over the crab. Now be generous with this, it really is sensational. Just to finish this dish off, shallots. Go to fish.gov.au for all the facts and figures or fishfiles.com.au for all the nutritional information. And on our Escape with ET website, you'll find Paul's recipe for this delicious Singapore chilli crab right now. The Maclay River mouth has thrown up a fishing opportunity that's too good to refuse. It's the last of the run out tide and uh, we've been able to park the boat here right beside the north wall. And we're just going to do a bit of a wander. There's uh, a bit of a bank. It's emerged, uh, I guess, over the last few months, has it? Yeah, well, this wasn't here a few months ago, but when we get the big nor'easters in the summertime, this sand forms on the inside of the uh, wall and I've heard of a few whispers that there's a few white and being caught, so. <laughs> <laughs> so. Well, I think we better go down there and have a look. Okay, so you've got little bits hanging off. Top. Little bits hanging off, yeah. It just makes them look a little bit more uh, natural and like they're waving around in the surf. And... More appealing. Break him off from one more, you reckon? Yeah, no, that's about there. Yeah, that's, that's good. Yeah, that'll do fine. That's Beautiful. Looks good. Well, that's good fun. I love my whiting fishing. Absolutely. I don't care if it's up a river or right here, like at the mouth of the, mouth of the yeah. mighty southwest rocks. It's great fishing. Oh, here we go. What's that? You've got... You've got somebody there. Yeah. <laughs> Someone's knocking. <laughs> Somebody's uh, put his hand up and said, catch me. You can always wash them up on the beach. Look at that. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> hey? First that? throw. <laughs> a, whole, a whole 30 seconds. Oh, it'd have to be some of the best eating fish in the ocean to go with it. They're a beautiful fish to eat, aren't they? Yep. Well, there we go. He's still got the bit of worm hanging on the, uh, on the beautiful long shank hook on the gamakatsu. Well, a healthy legal fish. I'll put him in the bucket. I didn't know I was whiting fishing today and I left all my whiting sticks at home. So this one here I'm often catching snapper with. A beautiful Shimano rod, the Therese. Braid's uh, probably around 10 pound. And then it's, it drops down to uh, what my trace was prior to that. And then onto the most important part, which is this lovely length of four pound fluorocarbon. You can hardly see it. I've got a little swivel on, a sinker just to keep the bait down on the bottom. It's gonna roll around and then down to a nice gamakatsu hook, about 500 down. Well, how's this for comfort? Darren and his partner are just parked up on over the sand dune there. They've got a van up the back, 
And they've made me this beautiful cup of coffee. And they've got pretty good taste in cups too. That's service for you. Nice fish. Nice work, Tone. They're looking better. Yeah. They're getting bigger. <laughs> <laughs> we'll just put him in the bucket. Well, we've landed nine or ten whiting, some of them quite a nice size. This is our last bait, so we're just sort of working this little edge. As you can see, we're fishing right along this shore. Such a fishy beach, and so few fishos to share it with. That's got to be heaven. Yeah, very good. Uh, it's great when you see the whiting in good numbers, but a magnificent looking fish. He's a nice fish too. I love this sort of fishing. It's just fantastic fun. Look at that, just a beautiful whiting. Yeah, and spending a few hours down here on the Maclay River, it doesn't get much better than that. Oh, you're giving me a little bit of hurry up this one. They go all right, don't they? Oh, they're beautiful little the fish. Fighting whiting. But after this, we're going to jump back in the 610 Trident. We're going to head a little further up the river and hopefully land at Mulloway. Gone. Lost it. Now, where were we before the break? Gone. Lost it. Yes. <laughs> double hookup, Billy. Well, it probably was a double hookup. There we go. Ooh. Yep. Feel that. I can feel that big tail. He's out there. Just couldn't believe it. But anyway, at least we get one. That's the main thing. <laughs> Didn't they hit hard, hey? It was a double hookup, really. Yeah. Look at that magic fish. I'll get you just to hold that yep. rod for me. Gosh, they look good, don't they? Yeah. All right. Woohoo! <laughs> What a good fish, eh? Nice way to fish. start. Mate. That incoming tide. The line's already been out 10 minutes, tops. All right, here we go. We're going to put him back in the water and give him a swim. He wants to go. Here you go, buddy. On your way. Look at that. I'm not sure where it is, mate. It's a different, different sort of fight, but yeah. yeah. It's looking like the right colour. Colour? Yeah, baby. Oh, look at that, yeah. hey? Look at that, eh? Woo! Yes. How good does that look in the dark? Wow, nice. Gosh, they're a beautiful fish. Yep. Pick him up. Oh, you're on. Get into him. Yep. Woo! All right. Oh, he's a, he's a big fish. He's bending that rod. Beautiful. <laughs> this is unbelievable. I'm going to leave this. Uh, I'll leave this one here for a minute. <laughs> yeah. All right. The cameraman hasn't got two arms. He, he looks better. Yeah, he does. He feels. He actually feels really good. Ooh, this is good stuff. This is what Mulloway fishing is all about. You never know when they're going to strike because you never know when they're going to come into the river mouth. And obviously they're. Taking this channel, we've picked the perfect. Well, I've got another one there somewhere. What do you got there? Oh, yeah. Oh, no, that's my one on this side. <laughs> All right. That's beautiful. Exactly what we're after. This to Mulloway. There we go. What a top night. Well, that's three. Yeah. Well, mate, three out of four. Three out of four. That's brilliant. <laughs> that's... Beautiful. Look at that. Just watch that other hook there. Yeah. It's just flapping, flapping in the breeze. These are a beautiful looking fish. I think you better drag yours over, oh, I reckon. Yeah, I will, mate, I will. <laughs> oh. There we go. <laughs> hey, double trouble, mate. Ah, oh, okay. Well, they, yeah, really very, clean very skin. clean skins. Maybe coming off the beach. Yeah, that, that, I can't believe how, how the, the colour's just magic. They're in good condition, beautiful fish. Oh, he didn't want to wait. 
He was gone. <laughs> you know it's a healthy fish when he does that. Right up. See you, buddy. Good luck to you. On your way. Well done, mate. Well, that was excellent. That's good stuff. That's brilliant. <laughs> so we've had a really good night. That's good on you, Dan. <laughs>